Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Still don't have that piece for my tripod, but you know, we're making it work. I'm doing what I gotta do. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about 22 beneficial insects to have in your garden and how to attract them. And I do have some notes because it was a lot of information for my little brain to retain. And I'm gonna be just keeping this to why they're beneficial and how to attract them because if I go into the whole gist of it then this video is going to be like 40 minutes long and that's just a little too much but without further ado let's jump right in so the first one on the list are ladybugs ladybugs are beneficial because they eat mealyworms mites and leaf hoppers and you can attract them by planting dill and fennel in your garden and dill and fennel also attract butterflies which are good pollinators and then you're also going to see dill and fennel come up quite a bit for all of the other insects that I'm going to be naming as well. The next on the list is the spine soldier bug and they're beneficial because they eat both the Mexican bean beetle and the Colorado potato beetle and you can attract them to your garden by planting perennial flowers. The third on the list is the tachnid fly and, and the way they're beneficial is that they lay the larvae on the actual bug itself and then the larvae eat the bug from the inside out. And some of those bugs are gypsy moths, cabbage loopers, Japanese beetles, army worms, cobworms, sawflies, codly moths, twig borers, pink bollworms, squash bugs, and many more. <laughs> and also when they become full grown, they also help pollinate your garden as well. And you can attract them by planting dill, parsley, herbs, or clover. And the next on the list are brachnoid wasps. And these are kind of similar to the tachnid fly where they lay their larva on tomato hornworms. So the larvae eat the tomato hornworm from the inside out. So if you do see a tomato hornworm in your garden that has a bunch of larvae attached to it, just leave it because it's gonna be dead before you know it. And as adults, they eat aphids, codling moths, caterpillars, be beetles, and flies. And you can attract them by having nectar plants with small flowers and also by planting dill, parsley, and wild carrots. And on the list is the ground beetle and they're beneficial because they're nocturnal and they eat snails, slugs, cutworms, cabbage, maggots, and caterpillars. And you can attract them to your garden with perennial plants or a compost pile. Next on the list is the minute pirate bug and they're beneficial because they eat aphids, spider mites, and thrips which if you are a houseplant owner, those are the three common pests that you can get in your houseplants. And you can attract them by having alfalfa or daisies planted. And number seven on the list are predatory mites. And basically they eat spider mites. And the way to attract them is by having extreme humidity in your garden. Number eight on the list is the mealybug destroyer. And in the name that it has, they eat mealybugs. You can attract them by planting fennel, dill, sunflowers, or goldenrod. Number nine is green lacewings. They're beneficial because they eat aphids, white flies, leaf hoppers, and mealybugs, and you can attract them by planting dill, angelica, or coriander. Number 10 are aphid midges, and they eat aphids, and you can attract them by planting dill. Number 11 on the list are damsel bugs, and they eat caterpillars, mites, aphids, and cabbage worms, and you can attract them by planting spearmint, caraway, and fennel. Number 12 on the list are Hoverflies, and they're beneficial because they eat aphids, caterpillars, and scale insects, and you can attract them by planting yarrow, dill, or basket of gold. Number 13 on the list are soldier beetles, and they're beneficial because they eat grasshopper eggs, aphids, and soft-shelled insects, and you can attract them by planting zinnias and marigolds. Number 14 are fungus night predators, and given their name, they eat fungus gnats, spider mites, and the larvae of gnats as well. And you can't really attract these to your garden. You have to do some research and buy them from your distributor and place them in your garden that way. Number 15, praying mantis. They're beneficial because they eat caterpillars, moths, beetles, and crickets. And you can attract them by having tall grass, shrubs, dill, and marigolds in your garden. Number 16, I feel like you either love them or you hate them, but it is spiders our eight-legged friend. <laughs> and they eat aphids, caterpillars, grasshoppers, and fruit flies. And you can attract them by having tall, larger plants where they'll have an area to spin their web like corn. Number 17 on the list are bees. And I think this is another one. You either love them or hate them, 
but bees are actually one of the most important parts of our ecosystem. They don't get enough credit for all of the work that they do. They are the biggest pollinators for your garden and you can attract them by having pollinating flowers or having plants such as tomatoes, raspberries, cranberries, strawberries, squash, anything of that kind of sorts. And that concludes the actual insect list, but I wanted to include some non-insect beneficial animals that can be good for your garden as well. And one of those would be toads. Toads are good for eating slugs and every kind of bug. They eat thousands of bugs in just a single summer. And you can attract them by having toad houses. You can look up a DIY toad house and just create an area that's gonna be fun for them and place them in your yard or your garden somewhere and they'll help keep the bugs at bay as well. Another one which I feel like would be a little controversial because a lot of people are scared of, but garter snakes. They're beneficial because they eat crickets, grasshoppers, other insects, and mice. So if you do have a mice problem in your garden, garter snakes are gonna be your go-to for that. And you can attract them by having tall grass, piles of wood, or rocks. Number 20 on this list is earthworms. And in my opinion, earthworms and bees are probably the two most important insects, animals, creatures, whatever you wanna call them, that you can have in your garden. Lots of earthworms and lots of bees are gonna be your best bet. But earthworms are beneficial because they aerate their soil, their waste makes the soil richer, and they're excellent at breaking down anything that you add to your garden. So just make sure that if you want to attract earthworms that you're keeping pesticides and harsh chemicals to a minimum because once they start breaking down the soil, it'll get too salty for them and then they won't want to live there and they'll leave. And the second to last one on the list are baby chicks. And I will have baby chicks next year professing it now, putting it in the universe, I will have chickens next year. But baby chicks are beneficial for your garden because as babies, they snack on a lot of insects and bugs. They're not really attracted to the actual plants themselves. It's not until they're full grown that they realize that tomatoes and cucumbers are good too. And the last one on the list are beneficial nematodes. And this is actually a beneficial parasite that eats over 200 plus insects that start their life cycles in your soil. These include weevils, Japanese beetles, fleas and gnats and you actually have to purchase these from your distributor and it's recommended that you repurchase them every year because especially if you live in an area that has harsh winters they tend to die over the course of the harsh winter and that's it guys thank you so much for watching i hope you've learned something about our insect friends in this video please leave any questions or comments down below like share and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one bye